Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün İngiltere'nin en iyi 20 üniversitesi arasında yer alan University of Kent'te eğitimi Amir, Can ve Emre'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Amir, the stage is yours now. Um, merhaba. Um, well, that is the only thing I know from <laughs> Turkey. Um, hi, um, I am Amir. I am actually originally from Iran. And um, so I actually visited Turkey quite a few times and I had a very good time and every time I visited there. Um, and in addition to that, I actually had quite a few students from Turkey and they were all fantastic um, students. Um, three of them did bachelor with me and one of them did a master's with me. Um, so, oh, actually the one who did master's last year, um, I'm going to see her this weekend um, actually for a tea and coffee. She's going to do, um, um, like she's going to do clinical stuff next year. All right. So, Hadi um, Baisle, I, I wanted to say something else, Turkey, but I can't do that now. I'm a little stressed. All right, so let's uh, begin. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, School of Psychology at University of Kent. Um, I will talk for about uh, 15 minutes or so. And after that, John, um, who is our current bachelor student, is going to talk about uh, student life um, at uh, University of Kent. Let me give you a brief overview of um, the University of Kent and um, where we are and what we have basically in terms of the campus and our location in the country. So um, University of Kent has two branches. One of them is well, in the UK has two branches. One is in Canterbury, which the School of Psychology is also in. Um, Canterbury is a historic city in the UK. It has one of the biggest, perhaps the biggest cathedral in the UK. And um, it is very important in that sense. It is only one hour away from London. So if you uh, go on the high speed train, one hour away and you are in central London, like in the heart of London. Um, and you can basically go back and forth quite quickly um, and you can access London very, very easily. Um, another important thing is that um, Canterbury is actually the closest UK city to mainland Europe. So if you go, um, if you want to go to France, Belgium, Germany, all of these uh, countries, it is only two hours away um, on the high speed train to, to, um, to France. And as you know, um, Canterbury is on the east side of uh, the UK, which is very close uh, to the, like in terms of like, distance to the border of uh, France. Um, and in terms of the campus life, John, John is going to actually talk about it um, in further details. So let me go and talk about um, School of uh, Psychology and basically what we offer uh, there. Um, we have two courses, um, Bachelor of Science, so BSc, Bachelor of Science in Business Psychology and also Business Psychology with a placement year. Both of them are approved by ABP, Association for Business Society, uh, Psychology, um, and they are quite new in, at, um, in our school, but they are very, very popular. Uh, placement here, just to briefly tell you what that is. Um, so that usually happens on the third year of your studies. In that year, you do something usually um, more relevant to the course that you have. For example, uh, for psychology, people might go to um, hospitals to work with patients, or some people go to prison, for example, to work with prisoners. Some people stay in, um, at the university and do research. Uh, but in terms of business psychology, you might uh, join a firm or different opportunities that are, are out there um, linked to business psychology. Just a second, I'm just, okay. Um, and in terms of um, other topics, we have general psychology, we have psychology uh, with a placement year, we have psychology with uh, clinical psychology, 
clinical psychology and a placement year forensic psychology and other than these we also have a business psychology with a year abroad so the difference between placement year and a year abroad is that in the placement year you are basically like an intern you go somewhere and you do tasks that are relevant to that particular position that you have for example hospitals and other things um, with a year abroad, you actually go to another university and you study like their own students. So University of Kent has um, quite close contact and collaboration with some universities in, in Europe um, and I believe um, in Turkey as well. And we um, send students out to their universities and also we accept the students uh, from their universities to spend one year um, at our university and basically learn, um, basically like study um, in their university. It's a very good opportunity to basically explore the culture, uh, student life and other aspects of that like country uh, first hand so it's a very exciting um, like degree um, let me briefly tell you about what we offer uh, in terms of different modules that we have in different years um, of your studies the first year um, is mostly focusing on your um, core skills that you need so we have statistics and methods which is uh, mostly like mathematical in a way but of course we have a lot of support to help you throughout this year to learn all the basics and also all the more um, advanced topic in statistics um, i know that um, mathematics and statistics is not necessarily um, the best skill that everybody has um, so we have a lot of support um, in different ways to basically help you and guide you throughout this year to learn all the necessary skills that you need to have for statistics and different methods. The support that we have are, for example, weekly uh, lab meetings, like you go in a computer lab and uh, you do practicals. Um, you have one-to-one -one interaction with um, some PhD students who basically guide you um, for your different assignments. Um, and we have a lot of different activities and you, you do, you join other, like experimental uh, research and you basically experience all the statistics that you, you study firsthand to understand what they mean and what is their applications. And you also have a lot of um, like classes in terms of the statistics. So we basically guide you throughout it. So no worries at all. Other than that, we have um, like biological and general psychology, social and developmental psychology. We basically cover the basics of all of these topics um, to basically prepare you for the rest of the studies that you have on the second year and third year or fourth year. There are also optional modules like business psychology, clinical psychology, forensic psychology, and other modules that are um, in other schools. For example, um, you can go to school of like another school and study philosophy or literature, or you might go to school of uh, like business or law. So these are, we call them wild modules. These are modules that you basically take from um, other schools. Um, in the second year and third year, the topics are more specific about the, your main studies that uh, you have, and there are more optional modules for you to pick. Um, of course, we continue with the statistics and methods because they are very important, but then you have options in terms of, for example, child development, um, cognitive psychology, personality, and all of these different topics. In a stage two of business psychology, the topic is a little bit, the, the modules are a little bit different with the modules that um, are there for general psychology, and they are more specific to um, business psychology modules, of course, because um, the, the focus of the course is different. In a stage three, that could be in your third year or fourth year, 
um, you basically do your research project. And that is a module that you basically have one-to-one -one interaction with um, a member of a staff, one of the academics, and basically they guide you throughout, uh, throughout a project. You usually design the experiment yourself, you run the experiment, you analyze the data, and finally you write your dissertation. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to basically practice everything that you learn throughout the first year and second year of your, um, of your studies. And of, of course, there are other modules that um, are optional that you can take and you can basically um, build your particular line of interest. I also briefly tell you about master programs. Um, we have um, cognitive, developmental, political, social and forensic psychology. Um, master programs and also organization and business psychology that is again um, ABP um, approved. In terms of other MSc programs, forensic psychology is at the moment approved, um, but the first four that I mentioned, they are not approved, but this does not basically limit you in terms of your future progression. So for example, if you want to go and do a PhD, or if you want to join the, like, go out in the industry, um, it not having the BPS accreditation for MSc program don't, does not limit you in any way. So you should not be worried about it. There are a lot of common uh, aspects for these master programs. For example, they are all, um, they have uh, statistics, methodological modules, and they are all um, totally fine for ESRC program, which is a one plus, plus three funding award. Basically, it is one year of master program and the PhD program following that. You need at least a 2-1 uh, degree classification in psychology to be able to um, those, do those programs. Um, for forensic psychology, you need a high 2-1 uh, degree. So um, it is about 65% um, and above um, to do a forensic psychology. In terms of differences, um, of course, because there are different topics of uh, study, they are more geared toward the, that particular topic. So, for example, organizational and business psychology, um, you have a lot of modules that are um, in terms of business, and we don't have that many business modules in the rest of the uh, programs that we have. And actually, some of the modules that you take is shared with Kent Business School. So you actually go and sit with um, those who study business. So it's a very, very specific to the topic, and it's actually very good to, to sit with the rest of the business um, students to, to basically share ideas and learn from them. And also, um, they learn from you because these are very important topics like psychology and business. Um, again, um, there are a lot of different topics that are taught in different programs, but they are basically a specification of those programs. Um, one important aspect of a school of psychology at University of Kent is that the, the courses are very much research-led. What that means is that we are basically um, very much research active and we use the research that we have and, and we conduct in our uh, lectures. So a lot of the slides and, and lecture content that I deliver are from the experiments that I do. For example, I look at cognitive enhancements in terms of memory and learning and I also work with Alzheimer and stroke. So whenever I talk about, whenever I uh, teach on, for example, learning, I have a lot of content um, uh, about my own um, like um, findings. So that basically gives a better idea to students where the applications of those theories are and how you can use those theories to basically understand real life uh, behavior. So University of Kent, well, School of Psychology at University of Kent is very much research active. And we are basically uh, quite high in the ranking. So we are a joint 11th uh, position in terms of research intensity in the UK in the last round of um, research excellence framework. And it was 2014. So the next one is happening right now, and we don't know the results yet. 
So the previous one was 2014, and we were the 11th in the whole country, which is extremely um, important. And also we are 59th university in timed higher education worldwide, um, in terms of um, like psychology that we deliver to our students. So in that sense, we are quite high in rankings. Um, our reputation is um, very much in cognitive, developmental, forensic, and social psychology, but uh, organizational and political psychology are also uh, getting more and more strong in terms of their research. We have a lot of resources in the school. Uh, we have technical support, so we have a team of uh, technicians who are there to help you with a lot of different uh, technical difficulties that you might have throughout your education. For example, for statistics, we use a particular software to run the statistical analysis. So we have technical support team to basically help you whenever you have difficulty um, in those um, topics. We also have state-of-the-art lab space. So I'm going to show you a few um, images from different labs that we have um, in the school, and I'm going to briefly tell you what they are. So the first image that you see, it is an eye-tracking lab, and that is basically to look at the eye and basically understand where the participant is looking at. So the participant is performing the task, and we can basically see where the participant is looking at. It is very, very interesting method to basically get implicit um, measure of participant behavior. For example, which part of the screen is more uh, interesting for them or less interesting for them. And this method is also used in um, children um, because it is not it is, you can monitor the eye from uh, like remotely, so there's nothing to put on the head, so it is very child-friendly. We have EEG labs, so these labs, uh, EEG is basically electroencephalography, which basically measures the electrical activity of the brain. So using that method, we can understand which part of the brain is more or less active while do, you are doing different tasks. We have brain stimulation labs. So in this image, you see, um, actually, this is Fadi, my student, who is placing um, an electrical brain stimulation on the head of the participant. In this method, we pass very weak electrical current through electrodes, and we basically modulate the activity of the neurons underneath the electrodes. This way, we can understand how different parts of the brain contribute in different um, tasks. This one is transcranial magnetic brain stimulation, which is again a form of brain stimulation, but instead of electrical stimulation, it uses magnetic fields. We also have um, quite like two, three large uh, virtual reality labs, and they are becoming more and more popular actually these days. Um, and in those labs, we simulate a lot of different things to basically study a lot of different uh, like behavior in different contexts. And of course, we have labs that are for behavioral studies um, that participants sit at the computer and they perform the task. One important unit in our school is child Kent uh, Child Development Unit. In that unit, we basically study children behavior uh, by infants and children, and that is extremely interesting. And finally, we have Bar Lab, which is basically a lab for participants to drink alcoholic drink or drink drinks that are meant to be an alcoholic, but they're not alcoholic. That is basically for placebo to pretend that these are um, alcoholic. And we have a lot of different uh, resources, like dedicated sport uh, space for work and um, other uh, opportunities. Um, a lot of different things happen in the school. So the school is extremely vi vibrant, and it, a lot of things happen there. Um, we have seminars, weekly, bi-weekly seminars, and we invite a lot of um, like famous and important uh, researchers in the world to come and give lecture. So our last annual lecture was by um, Professor Elemers, and she was actually from University of Utrecht. It is in the Netherlands. Um, and we also have um, like 
bi-weekly cafe psychology that is dedicated to interesting topics um, in uh, psychology. So for example, in this image you see Emma who gave lecture on um, basically animal cruelty. Um, in terms of prospects, uh, graduate prospects, um, our students go to a lot of different uh, positions. So some of my students, for example, um, are now working as research assistants at different universities, University of Nottingham, for example, at UCL, University College London. Um, some of them are doing PhD, for example, Royal Holloway in London, Nottingham, uh, again, University College London, King's, um, Bristol. So my students are now doing PhD in a lot of different countries, in different universities, and actually countries as well. One of them is doing PhD in Germany now. Um, and some of them are now research leads in different countries. So for example, one of my students is a research lead in, in a hospital in Yemen. Um, and a lot of other different opportunities that, um, that are out there. So this was uh, for me. And now I'm going um, to give the, basically, uh, the talk to John to talk about student life. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Thank you very much. That was really great. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hello. Uh, my name is John Genç. Uh, I'm currently a business psychology student. Um, I'm in my second year. Well, I just finished my second year. So I'll be going to my third year starting this September. Um, uh, I'm also a student ambassador for the School of Psychology. I'm a student representative for my cohort. Um, and upon graduation, I hope to do a master's. And I also want to find a career, hopefully one day in human resources, strategic business consultancy, maybe talent acquisition, uh, and anything to do with big businesses and the workplace. So today, I'm going to be speaking about some of my own experiences, um, specifically about our Canterbury campus, because that's where I started my university journey. Um, so as you can see on the slides, some of the students' uh, life you can see is that we have 4, 000, I mean 5,400 rooms, um, which are set in stunning parkland. Uh, I personally stayed in Keynes College, which is where the student, uh, where, where, which is where the School of Psychology is located. Um, so if you want to get to your lectures on time, every single time, uh, without an excuse, I definitely recommend staying in Keynes. You can get two types of um, actually uh, student accommodation on campus. One of them are uh, one of them is self catered, where you have your own kitchen that you share with a few people, and the other one is going to be part catered, where um, you will have maybe a, a, a kitchen with just a toaster and like a microwave and things like that, but you will have credits to go and eat at one of the outlets on campus. Um, you can also choose rooms that have ensuite um, bathrooms, or you can uh, choose accommodation that has shared facilities, um, and that all changes with the price range and things as well. Um, so it's all very personal preference on what you'd like to do. My recommendation, though, is to stay in Keynes, um, and that's only because that's where our school is. Um, the school psychology and the labs are located all in Keynes College. Anyway, moving along, um, our campus is very beautiful. It has a lot of greenery. Um, it has a stunning view of the Can Canterbury Cathedral, which is quite a historically um, important cathedral um, for the Protestant Church in the UK. Um, and it's a very beautiful scenery, as you can see in the photo above, over the trees. A lot of people will hang out on that green space. Um, on campus itself, we have a lot of um, restaurant options. Each college um, has its own um, restaurant to eat uh, and drink. Um, we also have two um, supermarkets on campus. Um, both of them are co-op supermarkets that are working with um, the Kent Union, and everyone who works there is a part of the Kent Union. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I definitely recommend um, going there for a snack in between lectures, or if you just want to grab a sandwich and go sit on the grass with your friends when the weather is very nice, that's also an option. Um, a nice fact about Canterbury and actually the Southeast itself is we're one of the first places in the UK to have sunrise, but we're also one of the first places in the UK to have sunset. So during the summers, we have very long days, and during the winters, we have very short days. Anyway, also moving on, um, we actually have our very own campus um, nightclub. It's called The Venue. Uh, it's very popular amongst the students, especially on Wednesdays. We have our very own Wednesday nights. Um, and we also have different bars that you can go to. And I'd say we actually have different styles of bars and different styles of events that cater to each person um, and each person's wants and needs. 
Personally, I don't like going to Ben's Days, but Friday nights are always really fun at the venue for me, where we have NXTs. Um, and I know a lot of people that like going to K Bar, which is our local bar, the Keens College Bar. Um, they also have some live bands sometimes. We have a cinema, which is the Gulbenkian Cinema. A lot of people like going there as well. Um, we also have many other things that you can do, such as the on-campus gym. Um, we have a, a very nice sports facility um, with a physiotherapy center as well, actually, um, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, moving along to the more studious subject of the library. Um, our library uh, is very, very nice. It's actually independent of the university and not many people know that, but it's an absolutely fantastic library to go to just to catch up with friends as it's right in the middle of campus. It has very nice spaces you can sit and communal areas that you can speak. There are also rooms that you can book for free with TVs and HDMI ports or projectors. Um, we have uh, various meeting rooms that you can book to do group assignments and things like that. There's also a cafe inside and there's also actually an exhibition in the gallery um, in case that takes your interest. We also have um, a bookshop. Um, we also have a job shop, um, which is uh, where a lot of people will go um, to find part-time work um, in the in the Canterbury area or in the Kent area, actually, not only exclusive to Canterbury. Um, other than that, I already mentioned we have a sports center and a gym. And to add to that fantastic list, we also have our very own um, medical center, um, which is um, absolutely great in case you need anything. Most students who end up living on campus will be registered to that local medical center and GP, um, where you can go whenever you need um, anything medically. Uh, medical assistance but also adding to that we have our very own um, on-campus nurses as well which are available 24 7 um, to add to that um, and Amir if you could move on to the next slide please thank you um, I'm just going to be talking about my experience with societies um, as I was in, well, as I was a prominent part of a, a committee of one of the societies. So actually I ran the um, Turkish society. I was vice president of the Turkish society for around two years. I started in my foundation year and then did it in my first year. And this year uh, we have finally transferred it over to um, a fresh set of leadership. Um, so there are a very um, prominent long list of uh, societies that you can go and look at on the Kent Union website. Um, I definitely encourage you to go and look at it because I'd say we have almost everything you can possibly imagine from cultural societies such as the Turkish society, we have our very own German speaking society, um, we have a Greek society, we have a Greek Cypriot society, we have the Albanian society, the Russian society, so those are the cultural societies. We have fun, even more fun societies, so we have um, if you're really into cocktails, we have a very good cocktail society where the, you learn how to make cocktails. We have a pole dancing society, if that's what you're interested in as well. Um, I know that we have a DJ society. We have a Quidditch society, if, any, if anyone watches Harry Potter, and that might take your interest as well. It always is very fun to watch. And to add to that, since we're a, Canter a campus-based university, we also have our very own sports facilities, such as our own pitches. Um, and our own rugby pitches. Um, we have indoor and outdoor tennis courts. We have basketball courts, we have volleyball courts, um, which is all great and included for free um, on your first year, which is something they actually introduced last year, I believe. Um, so if you come to Kent in your first year, you will receive a free sports membership where you'll be able to use all of these facilities um, absolutely free of charge, which is great because they didn't have it when I applied. <laughs> anyway. Um, and mentioning the sports, we have sports societies. Um, this is divided into two types of sports. Um, typically, you will have like inter-college tournaments. So there will be like a Keynes College football team, which is, you know, uh, our college. Um, there's Elliott College, there's Darwin, um, and there's Rutherford. They all have inter-college football teams, and you can have multiple, multiple teams within colleges, um, which is not as... Um, you know, um, competitive and it, allow, it really allows a lot of people to join and maybe make their own teams with their friends. But we also have the university representative teams, which are the big um, teams. So we have an American football team, we have rugby, we have football, we have a, a kickboxing team. I think we have like a march, martial arts um, club. They have some sorts of team going on as well. The volleyball team is very fun as well. Um, 
and these are just you know a, a very this is just a very small talk of a very long list of hundreds of activities you could possibly get involved with um, besides societies though I definitely encourage you to also take a look into specifically connecting within your school um, and what I mean by this is for example our the school of psychology offers the research experience schemes and the work experience schemes where you will be able to work with um, lecturers and professors such as Amir um, on his research uh, and it really allows students and professors and lecturers to actually contribute to real life research and get a very good hands-on experience. Um, I'm sure Amir would be very happy to talk to you about that afterwards um, if anyone had any questions about that. Um, and just to finalize, I'm going to be talking about some of my own experiences um, running a society. Um, if there's a society that you don't uh, that you don't fancy and you end up not finding something you you like, which is highly unlikely, you can make your own society. And all you have to do is make a proposal, and uh, you can create your own society um, that has a goal that will contribute to the university life and contribute to other students. Which is something my friends and I did um, when we found out that there wasn't a Turkish society. Um, so we started the Turkish society in 2018 it's still continuing now and just as an example of some of the things we did we did um turkish nights where we would go to the local turkish restaurant as a group and eat and we would have rakı. um we did a club night um where we we actually booked a, an entire club and ran our own event where we played turkish music and we had some turkish dancing uh, and things like that we also um, went as a big group to watch the big um, girls at Fenerbahce games. Um, and other than that, it was a really great experience um, just to kind of connect um, Turks uh, on campus and in the university um, to form a small community, um, even just to know a few um, people that maybe you could rely on in the future. Um, anyway, that's all for the societies. If you could move to the next slide, Amir, please. Hmm. Now, adding to the student life, here are some of the photos you can see. Um, you will have a welcome barbecue if you choose to study psychology, which is on the welcome week. Um, it's really great because you get to meet a lot of people exactly like you um, who are coming in from various different cultures um, and just getting to speak to people and meeting people that you know will be in your course. Um, I actually ended up meeting a few people that I'm still in contact with. Um, just you know, to, to ask how they are and they ask how I am. So it's kind of nice to really connect to your local um, school and get to know, know a few people. Um, it's actually really fun as well because um, lecturers also attend this and um, you get to really talk to and interact to most of the staff of the School of Psychology. Um, and it just really puts you out there and, and you get to know your local community, which is also great. Uh, I personally, since I'm a student ambassador and I'm a student rep, I get to do a lot of collaborative work with many academics um, and professional staff, which is something I definitely encourage um, anyone who wants to come to our university to do, um, just to basically connect and really make an impact and difference on not only your education, but um, experiencing you know, pro professional um, work, how to um, attend meetings, how to present yourself, how to speak publicly in front of people like I'm speaking to you right now, and, and more. Anyway, the next slide, um, please, Amir. I think the next slide is the Christmas party, which is the most popular um, party definitely in the School of Psychology. It's, as the name itself says, it's on Christmas. Well, it's not on the day of Christmas, but it's, I think it's on the week leading up to Christmas. Um, it's a great, another great event that we do uh, in the school where we'll usually have a quiz that is very personalized, um, that has like funny anecdotes and jokes towards lecturers and things like that. I'm sure when you come uh, and if you come to our university, you'll definitely get to see that a lot of our lecturers have their very own personalities um, and a lot of people like to pick up on that and kind of interact with them in many funny ways um, and, and such. And also just being in your first year, you'll see since you'll be in a larger crowd of people because it's more generalized, um, you'll definitely get to know a lot of different types of lecturers and their own styles and things like that. Uh, Amir is, uh, actually was one of my lecturers in my first year and he was always absolutely the funniest lecturer we always had. 
um, just to give you a small anecdote, um, he likes doing a lot of live presentations and he likes using the technology that we have in the School of Psychology, which is a great and fantastic way to learn about the technology and to also see it being used. Um, but it's also really fun to see one of your course mates uh, and your lecturers interacting in front of, you know, 350 people because they're usually kind of very shy and Amir is very outgoing and um, he really does make everyone laugh a lot. Um, he also likes doing a lot of interactive quizzes, so he'll put out um, papers and everyone will write down something that will be very interactive with the presentation. Um, and a lot of people will start laughing at that. And I think even once he gave us a live performance on the digital piano um, to kind of get us focused and in the mood to do his uh, fun interactive session, um, which is always a great way um, to, to interact with your learning, but also just the university experience. Um, so these things will always come up at this Christmas party and we'll definitely add them to the quiz and things like that. Um, as you will also find out that many of our other lecturers are also equally as fun as Amir. Um, and all have their very own um, personalities and interests in research. Um, so I think the next slide, Amir, um, will be the last one and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my um, experience. Um, you know, doing uh, first and second year at the University of Kent. Um, I absolutely love it. I've loved it for a very long time now. And um, I'm very happy in the position uh, and also being able to speak to so many people now um, who want to be at the university and hopefully will be at our university. Um, and it's been nice speaking to you. I'm also going to include my um, social links. Um, in case you'd like to reach out to me and connect and you can always ask me questions um, in case you have any. So, thank you. Um, John, um, we, I don't know who is going to read the questions, but there's one question here um, is directed to you. So, uh, I think she says, Hi John, which high school did you graduate? Uh, what was your GPA? Um, I, I actually went to um, a school called Istanbul International Community School. Um, I uh, grew up in Istanbul. I'm from Turkey, but I happen to be half English. Um, so I, I was lucky enough to go to an international school. My GPA, uh, I haven't looked at my high school transcript in ages. I'm really not sure my, what my GPA is. Um, but if you're really concerned about what your GPA is and if you're qualified enough um, to come to the University of Kent, um, you can always visit the university website and look at the qualifications section. They make it very easy to kind of transfer points, GPA, UCAS points, uh, international baccalaureate, um, GCSEs, IGCSEs, and things like that. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. And also, I know that if you make the University of Kent your first choice, they would be more than likely um, to accommodate for some specific um, boundaries and grades and marks that you might miss. Um, but again, that's all subjective to what you actually receive in the end. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, so uh, that was actually a question of um, another student who asked, what are the requirements for applying undergraduate psychology degree? Uh, John, as you said, um, university, well, our school is, um, we want, of course, good students. Um, but what is important is the motivation and enthusiasm in the students. And if they choose the University of Kent, basically our school as their first choice, um, then we are a little bit more flexible in terms of uh, requirements because when we see enthusiasm in students, is basically very rewarding for us. Um, and we, we like that. Um, but generally speaking, you need to have a 2-1, uh, which is uh, like 60% or so. I don't know the equivalent to GPA in Turkish system, um, but that is something that we advertise. Mm -hmm. I also know that um, if you apply with, for example, maybe like a minimum in the IB of like 34, and you make Kent um, your firm choice, they will drop to 32 maybe. Um, and if, for say, they are asking for a 34 and you apply with a 38, um, you would be more than likely um, to get a scholarship, um, which is around 600 pounds per term, I think, because um, I have a few friends who received that scholarship as well. 
Um, there's another question about a TOEFL score. Um, so this person has a master's degree from the U.S. and they are asking if they need a TOEFL score. I think that is a difficult question, but I think they don't need it considering that they have one year or maybe two years. So master's degrees uh, are two, three years in the U.S. So I think because they have education in an English-speaking country, uh, I think they don't need it. So, um, Emma, did you want to say something? Sorry, put you on the spot. You're mute. <laughs> John, you might know. Uh, um, um, about the TOEFL score, you're saying? Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough that I didn't have to do um, it, but I know that a lot of people do it just in case. Um, and I'm pretty sure if you've done a master's degree in the US, um, which would probably be around two to three years, um, you're more than uh, able to probably speak um, uh, English at a professional manner. And also, um, you would probably find TOEFL very easy. So. Um, I think if you're really curious, the best is to do uh, the best thing to do is maybe to contact the admissions team, which is HHS um, admissions at kent.ac.uk, and send a personal email. And I'm sure someone um, would be more than happy to get back to you uh, in a very short time because it's such a specific case. I don't know if there's like a general answer to it. Yeah, and if, if you contact the, the email address that we have here, HSS admissions, um, then um, they can help you as well, more specifically, because they are admissions team and they, they know everything about it. Exactly. Um, we have two questions about the scholarships. Um, I am afraid in bachelor uh, degree, bachelor level, level you cannot get a scholarship, but you can like full scholarship. You cannot get full scholarship, but you can get uh, like uh, awards that basically reduce part of your tuition fee. So if you do very well in your first year, if I'm not mistaken, you get discount on your second year. But I am not sure about it. So uh, please again ask that question. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a question about doing a joint honors degree. Yes, yes, Emma. Uh, we can hear you now. Uh, I'm very sorry. I couldn't unmute my my camera, which it was really frustrating. Um, but I, I was listening to what you were saying, and, and just very quickly on the English language. I know that if you've studied in an English-speaking country such as America, for example, then I think that does get, uh, qualify you for a language waiver. Uh, which means you probably won't need to take a language proficiency test. So I think you mentioned that already, but um, there is uh, further details on the website about if you studied a particular country, would you qualify for the exemption? So I definitely would check that out. Yeah. I see a question about doing a joint honours degree in economics and international management. Um, I think um, you. I think uh, a lot of. Um, Courses in the U.S. offer more um, joint honors degrees and things like that, and like majors and minors, um, and, and they make it very easy like that, um, which is a bit different to the U.K. system. Um, but to be honest, the, in in psychology in your second year, you get to elect wild modules and things like that, um, which is probably the closest thing I think you would have in your bachelor's degree to maybe um, doing something on only like other than just um, psychology modules, um, and usually be provided the list before you begin. And, and just, just to add, I'm sorry if you've covered this already, um, but in terms of kind of the scholarships we have available here at Kent, um, we do have a, a large variety available, some that are subject specific. Um, so if you're studying in a, a school of psychology, there may be scholarships specifically for you. Uh, there are also are more general scholarships that are available to international students as a whole. Uh, but what you will find is that most of the scholarships available at Kent tend to be tuition fee contributions as opposed to fully funded scholarships. Um, if you are looking for fully funded awards, then you might need to look to other external organisations such as Achieving, for example. They offer fully funded scholarships available to study here at Kent. Yeah. Um, 
John, there is a question that is in Turkish. I can, I can, like, I don't understand it. So it says, um, I wonder if there are programs approved by YOK. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so the YOK is actually the Higher Educational Institution of Turkey. Um, I, I believe they're only um, an institution that do accreditations for universities in Turkey. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know if they do accreditations for universities out of Turkey. I wouldn't see why they do that. Um, but that might be a specific question regarding to studying psychology in the UK and then maybe going back to Turkey to do um, psychology um, in a professional setting um, to be a qualified psychologist. Um, that's something you would have to probably look at the YOK for. Um, or you you would have to look at the, the, you would have to contact the admissions team or someone like that again. I don't think that's something we'd be able to answer. Yeah, um, and the same person continue with, um, so the question is, if they do bachelor uh, in the UK, feel this, uh, the, the degree that they get is acceptable in Turkey or not? Mm -hmm. um, that's again something that they would have to look at um, in, uh, in Turkey, um, I think you can contact the YOK, or they probably have a website with universities that they consider are, um, I guess, qualified universities outside of Turkey um, that would allow easy transition, um, you know, kind of like maybe getting credits or something like that, um, or some sort of accreditation that would be able, that you would be able to transfer to the Turkish style or the Turkish accreditation, which is the equivalent. Um, again, I think that's really um, specific, so they would have to look into it in Turkey because I don't think the university would say whether we give accreditations um, that can be transferable to a different country. Um, I'm pretty sure that the BPS accreditation um, gives you a, a perfectly you know, adequate um, qualification um, to become a psychologist uh, in, in the long run. Um, as far as I know, you won't be able to become a fully qualified clinical psychologist just from your um, undergraduate degree, so. You would say that's true as well, right, Tony? Yes, so as a, if you have a bachelor's degree, um, no, I mean, you, you're not a qualified psychologist in terms of practice, so you need to do some other degrees afterwards, regardless of the country, so. Um, but in terms of being a bachelor, Having a Bachelor of Psychology, the BPS accreditation is uh, is very strong, and I would say it is uh, like internationally recognized as a proper uh, degree. Mm -hmm. um, so, but as John you said, um, it needs to be checked locally in the target uh, destination country whether it is accepted or not. Um, I doubt it that it's not accepted, but. Um, it is yeah, I agree. Um, I also just for some information for the, the Turkish students here. Our university actually works very closely with Boğaziçi University, um, and we actually do have a year abroad program in connection to Boğaziçi University. So um, I'm going to assume um, that most of the things that are transferable are transferable, um, simply because I don't think that they would accept international students from abroad coming to their university if it wasn't accredited or there was some sort of, um, you know, n uh, non-accepted accreditation and things like that, um, which is also great. Um, I think Melissa is asking about the tuition fees. Um, that's very subject to who you are and where you're applying from. Um, you can check on the university website and kind of see which category you fit into. Um, so there are usually like two types of students. There will be the uh, international students and like the local um, undergraduate students. Um, I think the local fees at the moment are around 9,500 and international fees can go up to um, I think 18,000 um, per year. Uh, so that's something you would have to check um, through the link that Amir just sent you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just sent the link. Uh, it is 20,000 this year. Okay. Yes. So every year it seems to be going, every year it seems to be relatively the same. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned my um, social links. Um, I sent my LinkedIn and my Twitter. Um, these are my professional, um, that's my professional Twitter and that's my professional LinkedIn, obviously. 
Uh, so if you'd like to reach out through there in case you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to connect with you. Um, and if you have any more questions, we're here um, to answer them. So. Amir, maybe you could talk about your experiences um, with the work experience scheme and the research experience scheme, like having students. Maybe that would be interesting for some people here. Mm -hmm. So we have two schemes um, in the school that are quite popular. Uh, work experience scheme is basically for students who want to gain experience during the summertime, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that is basically for students to get involved in different aspects of the research and studies that they have. Um, a more popular one is research experience scheme that happens in the second year. And uh, students can basically join a research lab. So they contact academics and they can basically uh, get involved in their ongoing research that they are doing. That could be, for example, data collection, data analysis, and occasionally they actually run studies that might lead to some publications. So this year, um, I submitted one paper with one of my students who did res the research experience scheme with me last year. Um, we continued the project this year, and now we have submitted the project to be reviewed, and he is on it. So he helped a lot with the data collection and data analysis, and he is hopefully going to have one paper, published paper in his CV, which is which can be very helpful when he wants to apply to a master program. Um, so Red Research Experience Scheme is actually very popular in the school because you get to see stuff firsthand, like research and how it is done. Yeah, that's actually great. I know a few people who take, definitely take advantage of that and they always say very, very good things about it. Um, uh, something fun about psychology is in your third year, you'll actually be doing your dissertation, um, which is um, your own final project where you'll be actually conducting your own research. Um, so next year I'll be um, working with um, Dr. Don Nicholson um, for my dissertation project, and we're going to be looking at um, behaviors in the workplace, specifically looking at how um, groups in the workplace um, are, and um, we're going to be doing a hiring task selection, um, which is also a great uh, experience. Um, I think Ihan was asking about uh, accommodation. Yes, of course, I can uh, give you some information about accommodation. Um, we have many different types of um, accommodation. Um, you have two types. So the main two types are self-catered uh, uh, and part-catered. Self-catered, you have your own kitchen. Um, you will be cooking all your own food. With, with, but when I say your own kitchen, it's shared. You will share a kitchen um, where you'll be cooking your own food. And part catered is you will have like a small communal kitchen with like a microwave maybe and a kettle and things like that. But you'll be eating most of your meals in like a local canteen um, with some credits that you'll get, um, which will be a part of like your um, fees for the accommodation you pay and things like that. Um, I stayed in King's College, which is in the, which is right next to the School of Psychology, the School of Psychology is in King's College. Um, you can choose between having ensuite rooms or non-ensuite rooms. Um, ensuite rooms come with like their own shower and you have your own bathroom and things like that. Whereas with non-ensuite, you'll be sharing those facilities as well, as well as the kitchen. Um, other than that, um, there's not much to stay except for uh, some accommodations are more expensive than others depending on like the combination you choose. So I think if you choose like self-catered on suites, um, those are maybe the more expensive ones. And then if you choose like non, uh, if you choose self-catered like non-on suites, then that can change the price of things as well in case you're wondering. Um, and also all the accommodations on campus and it's all scattered around. So depending on the accommodation you choose, like you'll be close to your school or not but everything on campus is like a 10 minute walk, so that should be no problem. We also have, in the website, we have a virtual tour, tours. Um, I just sent the link in the chat window, and it is very nice to see the, the visual uh, tour, basically, uh, with the map of the, universe, of the campus, so do check it out. 
definitely. I think that might be it. That might be it. So, Zena. Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation, Amir and John. Uh, we believe it was a really informative webinar for the attendees. And we had a lot of questions and you covered them all. Thank you for your answers. Yeah, my pleasure. Yep, my pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me as well. This was great. Um, if anybody has any more questions, they can email me, LinkedIn me, Twitter me, and things like that. And I'd be very happy to answer. And um, we hope to see you at the University of Kent. Yes, I also would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. University of Kent ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adreslerinden iletişime geçebilir ve linkleri inceleyebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda sizi haftadaki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. Thank you very much again you guys. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.